All right, you guys, here we go. With the next level, when we say the next level, what we're talking about, tips and techniques, all you know, th that terminology to show you things that you possibly already know about. Our goal right now with the next level is to talk to you about things you probably don't know about or things you haven't seen. Why does line break? Are you selling me bad line, RJ? I've heard every story in the book here at RJ Boyle Studio, which is my tackle store, art gallery, etc. As for the films, we do instructional films. You can go to the website, RJ Boyle Studio, and you can download films and watch 27 instructional films up to three hours. The next level is basically a tips and techni techniques section on the next level. As we show you this one this week, I want you to think about something that you've experienced in the past, whether you were wahoo fishing, deep dropping for snappers, sword fishing, deep dropping. I want you to think about your tackle, I want you, and obviously how anal you are about your gear, your guides, the tip on your rod, the actual reels themselves, service-wise, anatomically wise. So check this out. Being like a deep drop specialized store, we deal with braid all the time. We test braids for companies, breaking strengths, etc. Just to give you an example, 65 pound braid should break between 85 and 93 pounds. 80 can break up over 100 pounds, 103 pounds, 105 pounds. And depending on the manufacturer, braids all have different feel to them. Some of them have wax coatings, some of them don't. Some of them are hollow, some of them are not, um, aren't. While I'm showing you this on a couple of Tiagras, this has nothing to do with the reel, the manufacturer of this particular reel, or the braid. This is a technique or something that somebody's doing to the line that causes the line to break. Avid, Alutechnos, all of them. Pen. If you're fishing braid, and I don't care what pound test it is, you need to do what I'm about to do to see if your reel does this. Again, I'm using a Tiagra right now because that's what's in front of me here at the shop. I'm also going to show you that sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't, which throws a loop into the whole thing, so you better check all your gear. Right now, basically a Tiagra 80 wide, I'm locking it up. I got 12 pounds of lead on the end. I've got 80 pound Power Pro Super Slick. Okay? Again, not mattering if this was suffix, diamond braid, or all of them. But how about the guy that walks over to the rod while you're dropping and decides that he wants to pull on the line just to test out, just to test out how much pressure is on the tip. The problem is when a guy does that one or two times, and as I pulled on it three times there, I can tell you that I just marred the braid. And if I pull up one time, just like I did there, okay? Maybe you can go back and you can sh show that slowly. But, what just happened, so you know and understand, all reels with a bridge that go across, underneath, to the feel, are not sharp. It feels relatively dull. The problem is with braid and that bridge, they don't work together. So if I lock the reel up and you got the guy that goes over and decides to pull on the braid and break it without five pounds of drag, that's why it's breaking. But understand something. That's never generally how it breaks. Very few people have sat here and broken it with five pounds of drag right here at the reel. Here's what's happening. The guy drinking the beer on the boat or the guy generally that doesn't know anything and, and you don't really want people touching your rod while you're fishing, walks over and decides to do this twice. Just to act like he's doing something. The problem is at that particular spot, he just marred the braid. Now the good fisherman, or the regular guy, goes over, drops down to the bottom, lets it out, and experiences the line breaking 100, 200, 300 feet away. The next call is to me that I sold him bad braid, and or Power Pro sucks, or Suffolk sucks, or this one sucks. The manufacturers of the line, Portland, all of them, they make good products. Some break higher than others. The problem is, is that whatever reel you have inside, your line's been marred. For me to sit there, be able to grab the line, pull back on it, right there, and break it, 
just goes to show that there's a problem with this reel. Now, I'm going to show you another Tiagra. 100 pound braid. Pull to the bridge of the reel. And it does not break. Pull it off. As you look at it and feel it, very, very little chafe on the, on the line. Some reels do it, some reels don't. Okay? Check all your reels. And think about this for a second. Replay in your mind the past of if you've ever broken anything or wondered or held a shop accountable or a line cut. has nothing to do with manufacturing a machine or a reel or whatever. It's not always the same. None of them are perfect. None of these companies are perfect. It's just the way it is. How many times have you been wahoo fishing, had lead, had weed on a lead and gone over and pulled the line? How many times to shake off the grass? Do not ever do it with these reels. Bridge of the reel is always going to do something to the line. Well, I would suggest take your rod, take your reel, take a piece of mass of uh, electrical tape and tape just underneath the bridge so that when that line does rub up against there, it's rubbing against the electrical tape. That'll solve your problem. Be more aware. It's the next level. We're talking about things on the next level. RJ Boyle Studio signing off. Talk to you soon with another tip and technique at the next level. One other thing I just wanted to tell you about, mutton snappers. We're going to be fishing in two weeks with a guy down in uh, Miami. His specialty is mutton snapper. We're going to dissect everything. On the website, it'll be up probably within 45 days. Um, just go to RJ Boyle Studios, go to the film section, and you can click on a, one of 27 films. You can download it, buy a thumb drive with all of them on it, or actually a, a CD. So either way, a few weeks, look forward to the mutton snapper film.